All right, you're back here on the program. This is Matt Johnson, everybody. Say hi to Matt Johnson over here. Very excited to talk to Matt. Let me tell you why. Matt's made a film that's really good. Really good, and also conceptually very difficult to pull off. Because if you sit there and say, look, I'm going to make this movie, and it's going to deal with lots of things. It's going to deal with mythology, but it's really going to deal about youngsters. Bullying will be a part of it, but it's going to manifest itself, in a sense, uh, in a school shooting. It makes people very uncomfortable. It makes people very curious. Uh, that kind of storytelling can be very effective. Sometimes people make it darkly humorous. If you watch Heathers, if you're of a certain vintage, you know how that played out. If you watch Elephant, completely different tone. Um, this one's a Canadian film that hit a tone that's so interesting. Kevin Smith even said it was you know, the most important film you're going to see this year. Not that you need the validation from other filmmakers, but it's nice to get it when it's somebody who's also changed the game in their own right. Very excited to talk to the guy who made this particular picture. Here's a clip. If we made a movie where we went in and we just shot the bad guys. Yeah, that's what we did in our movie. But if we actually did it, if we actually went with real guns and actually killed only the bad guys, but we just blew them away, all on camera, Platoon's like, you know, guys, this is really... You, di you didn't listen to me. <laughs> I, thought it, I said it was too dark before when you were pretending to kill these guys. Now you actually kill them? Oh, you're actually going to kill these guys. Oh, that's funny. Oh, this is so sick. How long did he make that film? But here he is, the actor Matt Johnson. Good to see you, man. Me too, thank How you. Things? They're great. Congratulations on the success of this movie, but it must be an odd movie to get a lot of attention for because you don't just get to talk about the film. You actually have to have really in-depth conversations about the larger issues. Yeah, we, I, I've become a spokesman for like teen mental health and violence and bullying, which are all things that are in the film, but certainly this is a movie about kids making movies more than it is about like, the deep psychological issues. That... Would you have made it differently or would you have made different choices if you knew that people would be thr thrusting this upon you? No, no, of course not. I mean, I don't think we could have changed anything. We had no money. This was, this, was, this was the best version of this movie we could have possibly made. How much was that? I read 10,000. Is that legit? Before we had to buy like, music rights and things like yeah. that, yeah. Like, literally, we had nothing. So the music budget of the film was 10 or 12 times what we spent actually shooting the film. And we only had to do that after we got sold to Kevin Smith. Right. So, so uh, Kevin, when he was on our show, you know, was talking. Do we have a clip of Kevin Smith? I think we have a Kevin clip, right? We all want three things. We need three things. A food, f***ing, and to be heard. Right. And you can manage the first two pretty well, right? right? You can even pay for the first two right. in most cases. But to be heard is a lot tougher. That's a big part of the story. It's usually, yeah. Kids wanting to be heard. And wanting a voice. And wanting to have power in a high school structure where they feel powerless. Which I think is actually a very common problem in North America. Right. Especially with young men feeling like you have absolutely no power or identity at all and using violence to create that identity. Why, why do you think, do you think people are entitled to have their voice heard when they're 16 years old? Because I mean, I've gone through the same things, right, growing up, and I always wondered, I, I understand we do want to be heard, but why do we feel like we have to be heard? Well, I think that, that, that the idiom like wanting to be heard is, is being used strangely because it's not that you want to be heard, it's, wanting, it's you want to know who you are yeah, and you want to know what you're capable of. And I think, Young people are fascinated with this idea, especially in the culture that we live in where everybody, where the number one commodity seems to be fame, mm -hmm. and fame seems to be completely centered around voice and identity. And young people feel like they must have this thing that everybody takes as the most valuable thing in the world. And because that's so tied up in who they are, there's a real struggle to fill, figure out exactly who you are when you're 14 years old. What does it mean to you to have a filmmaker like Kevin em embrace it? It's cool. It's funny because the character Matt in the movie like, if he knew that Kevin Smith was selling his movie, he'd go completely insane, like, because he's obsessed with Kevin Smith movies. We have a Kevin Smith poster yeah. in the movie, too. Uh, I mean, I was watching the film thinking, Canadians should be making these films. Like, this is one of the things we should be saying Right. is this kind of story. Which is funny, because universally, this movie is seen as American. Every film festival I went to, especially in Europe, all billed this as American. Everybody thought I was an American. In America, we played as an American film, and it was all. This was literally made by five Canadian kids. Right. This movie because they don't know who we are. People, don't, even Canadians, don't know who we really are as Canadians now. Exactly, and we and, it, and it's hard. I think like this movie, we begged to play at TIFF for like a year and a half. Begged them to play it, and they're like, "This movie sucks. Go away." And <laughs> and it, I, it's I, there's something culturally that about about movies like this, or I think about even like young independent voices where. It just seems American. It doesn't seem Canadian to have, like, a, I guess not, not like a strong stance on these types of things, but to make movies in this, I think, American canon. 
seemingly impolite is yeah, what I it think is, that's, right? That's a part of it, yeah. When you were growing up, were you watching Canadian filmmakers thinking this is where I can go? Did you have people that As you would... a joke, we would watch, like, you know, like, I went to film school and you make joke, jokes about Canadian film, except for Quebec films, like, like yeah. Jutra stuff, that stuff's wicked. But no, we, like, like, when you're young, I don't think you know what a Canadian film is mm -hmm. because you just think about movies. Right. Um, it wasn't until I was much older that I even knew, like, what Cube was then. And actually, Cube's a good example of a movie that everybody thought was American, too. Right. So do you feel, you must feel in some way like you're a super outsider in the Canadian film business. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, mostly because we, we keep begging for stuff. <laughs> they keep saying no. But yeah, I mean, I'm still a film student at a Canadian film school. Um, I did my undergrad here, too. Yeah. So in that sense, I feel very connected. But um, there's a real, like, like, divide between, like, established, older, I think, Canadian filmmakers and producers and young people, especially in Toronto, who are making movies. Like, they, they, never the two shall meet. Right. Ever. Can you learn stuff from them? Can they learn stuff from you? Yeah, of course, of course. But, I mean, we, the Canadian film system is heavily, heavily politicized in a way that um, the American film system isn't really. And uh, there are a lot of, not barriers, but things have been done a certain way for a long time. And for that to change, a lot of people have to die. I mean, like, of old age. I don't mean, like... <laughs> I don't mean like somebody's got to go out and kill all these, these people. <laughs> I'm looking forward to Encyclopedia Brown opening TIFF next year. You're right, yeah. You know. Well, I'm not directing that movie, no, so. No, you're, that's true. you're writing that film. Uh, it is, it's American, so they may take it. They, they, they might, yeah. yeah. So in a way, I, I don't know if you, how honest you can be about this, but do you have a bit of a you in you towards what's going on in Canada and the no, film business? No, because I'm like, uh, it's not, the, nobody's going to get in your way of, from making movies. I mean, in America, they, there's no telefilm. There's no right. Amerifilm yeah. in Canada. Like, there's no, like, funding body that will make your movies. So, of course not. But I think that being young and being a filmmaker, especially in Toronto, it's, like, when I see other young filmmakers, it's, like, it's easy to make fun of the old system. Yeah. Just because it's so modded for, like, 20 years ago, okay. and not at all. Well, and it's a relatively young system, too, and I think that's part of it. Yeah. Look, man, congratulations. You made a hell of a film, and, uh, and I'm really thankful that you were here today. You're the man, dude. Thank you. Thank you for your time. It's called The Dirties. It's on demand. It's also on iTunes. I really recommend you watch it. These guys are pretty impressive what they're going to do. They're going to love all the films they're making in the future, I imagine. Matt Johnson, we'll be right back.